Praise God. This is the night the Lord has made, and we will rejoice because we have a choice. Amen. Amen. Turn to your neighbor and tell them, you got a choice. You can be miserable, or you can be joyful. But if you're miserable, make sure you tell nobody you don't know Jesus. Because Jesus ain't miserable. Amen. Amen. He's peace, joy, and righteousness, and the Holy Ghost. Praise God. How many of y'all know God's got a plan? Yeah. And it's a good plan. Oh, yes, it's a very good plan. Would you turn to 2 Chronicles chapter 20? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's after 2 Chronicles chapter 19. <laughs> Praise God. 2 Chronicles chapter 20. Before we start the scripture, I want you to understand something that there's two realms we live in, the seen and the unseen. We actually live in both realms. Amen. The word says that we're blessed every spiritual blessing and seated in heavenly places. Most of the time people don't get it. It's not until you're filled with the spirit, have a relationship with the Lord, that you begin to see things the way God sees things and not the way man sees things. And that's one of the Lord's desires is that we get to a place where it's no longer the way we see it, but the way he sees it. Amen. That's the heart of a father, that his children see what he sees. That's the heart of the father. And in that, there's an area where he tries to position us. He actually tries to align us. Everyone say spiritual, spiritual. alignment. That's why even Jesus went into places and he couldn't heal people because their faith was not aligned with healing. Amen. They didn't have the faith. There's an area where there's an alignment where God is trying to get us aligned. He's trying to get us aligned with his word, his character. He's trying to get us aligned in those areas. But the enemy loves to distract. See, if you don't read the word of God, it's impossible to be aligned. It's impossible. What he wants you to do is get aligned with his word. So you live out of his word, not out of your emotions. People that live out of their feelings are very deceptive. In fact, you can't trust them because they'll flip on you. Because they'll allow, I mean, everyone here knows somebody that you can't trust. And the reason why you can't trust them is because their emotions always make their decisions. Amen? Amen. Oh, hallelujah. In 2 Chronicles chapter 20, in verse 1, would you read it with me? And it happened in the spring of the year at the time kings go out to battle. So they're supposed to all go out to what? Battle. Oh, sorry. I'm in First Chronicles. I thought that sounded a little funny. Go out to battle. I love the battle. Anyways, it happened after this that the people of Moab with the people of Ammon and others with them besides the Ammonites, came to battle against King Jehoshaphat. Then some came and told Jehoshaphat, saying, A great multitude is coming against you from beyond the sea, from Syria, and they are Hazaz and Tamar, which is in Gadi. And Jehoshaphat feared and set himself to seek the Lord. Hello. He did what? He feared and set himself to seek the Lord. He didn't fear and run and shut the door and hope something would happen. Amen. He sought the Lord. Amen. Amen. And he proclaimed a fast throughout all Judah. So Judah gathered together to ask help from the Lord from all the cities of Judah. They came to seek the Lord. Why were they fearful? Because all of these armies were coming against them. It was impossible for them to win. Amen. Totally impossible. Then Jehoshaphat stood in the assembly of Judah and Jerusalem and in the house of the Lord before the new court, and said, O Lord God our, of our fathers, are you not God in heaven? And do you not rule over all the kingdoms of the nations? And in your hand there is, not pow is there not power and might, so that no one is able to withstand you. Are you not our God, who drove out the inhabitants of this land before your people Israel, and gave it to the descendants of Abraham, your friend, forever? 
And they dwelt in it and have built your sanctuary in it for your name, saying, If disaster comes upon us, sword, judgment, pestilence, or famine, we will stand before this temple and in your presence, for your name is in this temple, and cry out to you in our affliction, and you will hear and save. And now here are the people of Amamo of Mount Sira, whom you would not let Israel invade when they came out of the land of Egypt, but they turned from them and did not destroy them. Here they are, rewarding us by coming to throw us out of your possession, which you have given us to inherit. O oh, our God, will you not judge them? For we have no power against this great multitude that is coming against us, nor do we know what to do. But our eyes are what? Upon you. Now all Judah, with their little ones, their wives, and their children, stood before the Lord. Then the Spirit of the Lord came upon Jehazel, the son of Zechariah, the son of Benaiah, the son of Jael, and the son of Maniah, a Levite, the sons of Ashva in the midst of the assembly. So the Spirit of the Lord came. He came to bring an answer. And he said, Listen, all of you of Judah and you inhabitants of Jerusalem, and you King Jehoshaphat, thus says the Lord to you, Do not be afraid nor dismayed because of this great multitude, for the battle is not yours but God's. Tomorrow go down against them. They will surely come up by the ascent of Zid, and you will find them at the end of the brook before the wilderness of Jerel. And you will not need to fight in this battle. Are you ready? What does it say? Position yourselves, stand still, and see the salvation of the Lord who is with you, O Judah and Jerusalem. Do not fear or be dismayed. Tomorrow go out against them, for the Lord is with you. How many everybody say, the Lord is with me? See, but the enemy wants to tell you he's not. But he says something very powerful. He says, position yourselves. That means get aligned. Get aligned. So Jehoshaphat bowed his head and his face to the ground, and all Judah and the inhabitants of Jerusalem bowed before the Lord, worshiping the Lord. Then the Levites and the children of the Canaanites and the children of the Korites stood up to praise the Lord God of Israel with voices loud and high. So they rose early in the morning and went out into the wilderness of Tekoa. And they, as they went out, Jehoshaphat stood and said, Hear me, O Judah, and you inhabitants of Jerusalem. Believe in the Lord your God. In other words, believe his word. What's he trying to do? Align you. He tries to align us always. He says, Believe the Lord your God and you shall be what? Established. So if you believe his word, will you be established? Oh, yes, you will. Believe his prophets and you shall what? Prosper. Because the word not only, the word believe not only means to follow, but it also means to align. Because if you follow, you align yourself up with the word of God. Amen. And when he had consulted with the people and appointed those who should sing to the Lord and who would praise the beauty of holiness as they went out before the army and were saying, praise the Lord for his mercy endures forever. I want you to know that God set up a worship team to go out before the army. You don't see that today. He sent a worship team to go out before the army. Why? Because the fight isn't physical. It's spiritual. Until that gets in to a person's heart, they will never make what is unseen to become seen. It will be easily deceived all the time to the day they die. Because it's our responsibility to make what is unseen to become seen. And it can only happen when you align yourself with the Word of God, with the Spirit of God. Amen? Amen. Now watch this. So they went out praising and worshiping the Lord, right? Here was this army. They were totally outnumbered. They could not win. It was impossible. It says in verse 22, Now when they began to sing and praise, the Lord did what? Set ambushes against the people of Ammon, Moab, Mount Seir, who had come against Judah, and they were defeated. What does the word say? When the spirit of heaviness comes in, lift up the garment of praise. That's how many times people get oppressed or get attacked. And they just get they fall out instead of praising God or lining themselves up. 
They let the enemy beat them because they're not making what is unseen to become seen. They don't realize that that influence came from a presence of evil. Oh, they're all my thoughts. Well, you're an idiot. Because you don't get it. You have no understanding of the spiritual realm. And you'll constantly be deceived and stay in that cycle. Does everybody understand? God, your Father, is trying to line us up and keep us aligned. Now, the enemy will try to get you out of line, won't he? Amen? Hallelujah. Now, watch this. So these guys are all killing one another, right? In verse 23, for the people of Oman and, Mount, and, and Moab stood up against the inhabitants of Mount Syrah to utterly kill and destroy them. And when they had made an end of the inhabitants of Syrah, they helped to destroy one another. Why? God brought confusion in the enemy's camp. I've seen that happen in courtrooms. I've seen people facing a lot of time. And God was going to bring confusion. We called it. We said, Lord, we call confusion in this courtroom. We ask that you make a way of escape for this person. And he has. I think the judge got so frustrated with an attorney, he just dismissed the case. A pretender, you know. Public pretender. Verse 24. So when Judah came to the place overlooking the wilderness, they looked toward the multitude, and there were their dead bodies fallen on the earth, and no one had escaped. When Jehoshaphat and his people came to take away the spoil, they found among them an abundance of valuables on the dead bodies and precious jewelry, which they stripped off for themselves, more than they could carry away. And they were there three days gathering the spoil because there was so much. How many of y'all know what God wants to bless you? He can't, listen, he can't, those things are stolen because people do not get aligned. The devil comes to steal, kill, and destroy. That's why people go in cycles. They go in cycles. Up and down, cycles. Same thing. Cycles. They can't break through. You break through when you get aligned. Amen? It's called spiritual alignment. Amen? Amen. Now, what is spiritual alignment? The word alignment means it's a place of position of agreement. When you align something, it's a place of a position of agreement. Who are you agreeing with? What God says, not what the enemy says. Amen? It puts a place of order. There is a, 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 an alliance. There is a, an arrangement. That's what parables are about, too. We'll talk about those in a minute. That's how God puts things in divine order also, by aligning. Look at the enemy can't, when you're in alignment, nothing can defeat you. You are victorious in everything. Everything. Even in the book of Amos, you don't have to go there, it's chapter 3 and verse 3, you can write it down. It says, can two walk together unless they agree? That's alignment. Amen? Align, what, look, at we got to align with truth. We got to stop aligning ourselves with what the word says in the arena of the world. Does everybody get it? The, the world God has their own word. Amen? It's called false doctrine. We have to align ourselves with the word of God of truth. And that's the only thing. We live out of the word of God. Not out of the will of emotions. Not out of our past. So that we can live from the future to the present. When you live from the future to the present, you got victory. Because if you align yourself with the Word of God, it always brings you to the future, not to the past. And the enemy can only attack you from your past, right? And he does a very good job at it. 1 John chapter 5. Oh, glory. You fight for that position. And then you fight to maintain that position. First John chapter 5 and verse 1. Remember the word believe means to follow. It also means to align. Amen? Whoever believes that Jesus is the Christ is born of God. And everyone who loves him who begot also loves him, who is begotten of him. 
By this we know that we love the children of God when we love God and keep his commands. For this is the love of God that we keep his commandments and his commandments are not burdensome. And whatever is born of God overcomes the world. Are you born of God? Amen. Then you should overcome the world. Why? Because you're aligned with the Lord. Whatever is born of God overcomes the world. And this is the victory that has overcome the world, our faith. That's why it's important to be aligned in the arena of faith. Faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. Amen? You increase your faith by praying in tongues. You increase your faith by singing and praising. In verse 5. Who is he who overcomes the world? But he who believes that Jesus is the Son of God. Verse 6. And this is he who came by water and blood. Jesus Christ. Not only by water, but by water and blood. And it is the Spirit who bears witness because the Spirit is what? Truth. Come on, speak it with me. For there are three that bear witness in heaven. This is the unseen realm. It says the Father, the Word, and the Holy Spirit. Why? Because that is. The Word hadn't become flesh yet. Amen? And these three are what? They're one. That means they are aligned with one another, aren't they? And there are three that bear witness on earth, the Spirit, the water, and the blood. And these three at what? Agree as one. There's an alignment. Does everybody understand that? If we receive the witness of men, the witness of God is greater. For this is the witness of God which he has testified of his Son. He who believes in the Son of God has the witness in himself. He who does not believe God has made him a liar because he has not believed the testimony that God has given of his Son. And this is the testimony that God has given us eternal life. And this life is in his son. So we see that the Father, the Word, and the Spirit are aligned in, in the eternal realm. And then what came in alignment in the, in the physical realm was Jesus, who was the Word, the Blood, or the, the Blood, uh, and uh, the Spirit, a man in his Word, which was Jesus was made of, of the Word of God. Is everybody okay? Amen. Oh, Hallelujah. Let's go to uh, Mark 9. Spiritual alignment. Mark chapter 9. So this, this is how the Lord is trying to get us to an area of, so that we are spiritually aligned. When you are spiritually aligned, you have victory over the physical also. That's where the word says you are more than a conqueror. He who is in you is greater than he who is in the world. You can do all things through Christ who strengthens you. Listen, if you ain't spiritually aligned, you can quote all day long. Amen. Mark 9, is everybody there? Amen. Is everybody okay? <laughs> Spiritual alignment. Verse 23. Let's speak it. Then Jesus looked around and said to his disciples, oops, verse 23. <laughs> and Jesus said to him, if, what? You can, what? Believe, follow, align yourself. All things are, what? Possible to him who believes or aligns himself. Does everybody get it? Everything is possible. To your neighbor say, everything's possible. Everything is possible. Immediately the father of the child cried out and said with tears, Lord, I believe, help my unbelief. When he saw that the people came running together, he rebuked the unclean spirit, saying to it, Deaf and dumb spirit, I command you, come out of him and enter him no more. The spirit cried out, convulsed the child, convulsed him greatly, and came out of him, and he became as dead, as one dead, so that many said, he's dead. But Jesus took him by the hand and lifted him up, and he arose. And when he had come into the house, the disciples asked him privately, why could we not cast out the demons? 
And Jesus said, this kind come out by nothing but prayer and fasting, sanctification. So here the, this guy brings this demon-possessed child who kept throwing him in the fire and throwing him in the water. This was going on for his whole life. And he asked Jesus to heal him. Well, Jesus cast the devil out. That's a responsibility of every believer is to be able to remove and drive out demons. Does everybody get it? That's what the word says. He who believes, he who believes and follows, who aligns himself, will cast out devils. That's the first thing. Why? Because it's our responsibility to remove the presence of evil. First out of you and out of others and out of the atmosphere. Is everybody okay? All things are possible to those who align themselves up with the word of life. Matthew 18. Is everybody there? Amen. In verse 18. Is everybody, let's speak it. Surely I say to you that whatever you bind on earth, it means in the physical realm, will be bound in the heavenly realm. And whatever you loose on the earth in the physical realm will be loose in the heavenly realm. Why? He's trying to show a parallel, isn't he here? Again, I say the, the, to you that if two of you what? Agree. That's an alignment, isn't it? On earth concerning anything they ask, it will be done for them by my Father in heaven. For where two or three are gathered in my name, I am there in the midst of them. Woohoo! So when we praise and worship the Lord, he comes. Why? Well, I just don't believe it. It's because you're not aligned. You don't have the faith yet. You can't see those things. You can't sense the presence of God yet. But when you praise and worship, you should sense the presence of God. But until you're broke free and able to get aligned, then things begin to flow. It's like going to a fountain that's dry or a fountain that's filled with water. Does everybody get it? Hallelujah. John 15. That's why the Lord says, press in. Deny yourself. John 15. In verse 1. So everybody there, we're going to speak this, okay? We're going to speak the first seven verses. Are you ready? Amen. I am the true vine, and my Father is the vine dresser. Every branch of me that does not bear fruit, he takes away. And every branch that bears fruit, he prunes, that it may bear more fruit. What are the, who are the branches? We are. You are already clean because of the word which I have spoken to you. He says, abide in me and I in you, as a branch cannot bear fruit of itself unless it abides in the vine, neither can you unless you abide in me. I am the vine and you are the branches. He who abides in me and I in him bears much fruit, for without me you can do nothing. What's he trying to do? Get him aligned, isn't he? If anyone does not abide in me, which align him with me, he is cast out as a branch and is withered, and they gather them and throw them in the fire, and they are burned. If you abide in me and my what? Words abide in you. There's the alignment. You will ask what you desire, and it will be what? Done for you. By this my Father is glorified that you bear much fruit, so you will be my disciples. Powerful. In Mark 4, Mark 4, in verse 1, again, Jesus spoke in parables because parables are parallels. So he was explaining them things in the physical realm and hoped that they would understand the spiritual so that they could align themselves up with understanding. In Mark 4 and verse 1, let's speak it again. 
And again, he began to teach by the sea, and a great multitude was gathered to him, so that he got into a boat and sat in it on the sea, and the whole multitude was on the land facing the sea. Then he taught them many things by, he taught them by parables. And is everybody going to understand it? Because that brings alignment. And he said to them in his teachings, listen, behold, a sower went out to sow, and it happened as he sowed that some seed fell on by the wayside, and the birds of the air came and devoured it. Some fell on stony ground where it did not have much earth, and immediately it sprang up because it had no depth of the earth. And when the sun was up, it scorched, and because it had no root, it withered away. And some seed fell among thorns, and the thorns grew up and choked it, and it yielded no crop. But other seed fell on good ground, yield a crop that sprung up, increased, produced some thirtyfold, some sixtyfold, and some a hundredfold. And he said to them, he who has an ear to hear, let him hear. Now, I want to explain something to you because there's a difference between listening and hearing. If I was to throw a ball at you, if you caught it, that means you're hearing it. If you just let it bounce off your chest, you're listening, but you ain't hearing. Because see, when you hear, you express Everybody got it. When you hear it, you express it. Because you got to catch it. So you catch it, you express it. If you're just listening, it just goes through. It's like water going on uh, feathers of a bird and just falling off. But there's a difference between hearing and listening. Did you ever get around someone that says, yeah, 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 yeah. And they can get a stinking thing you said. Because they're too busy thinking of everything else. Amen? Amen? It's called listening. Hearing, you receive, you believe, because you catch it and you activate it. Amen. You use it. Amen? Amen? There's a difference. There's a lot of listeners and not enough hearers. That's why Jesus said, he who has an ear, let him hear. Amen. Not let him listen. Glory. <laughs> he who has ears to hear, let him hear. But when he was alone, those around him in verse 10, with the 12, asked him about the parable. And he said to them, Do you, to you it has been given to know the mysteries of the kingdom of God. But to those who are outside, all things are come in parables. So that seeing they may see and not perceive, and hearing they may hear and not understand, lest they should turn and their sins be forgiven them. And he said to them, do you not understand this parable? Well, how then will you understand all the parables? He said, the sower sow the what? Word of God. And these are the ones by the wayside where the word is sown. When they hear Satan, who comes? Satan. Satan. In other words, demon, some kind of evil spirit, unclean spirit, comes to what? Comes to what? Immediately and takes away the word that was sown in their hearts. Now, if they're hearing, is Satan going to be able to get it? No, only if they're listening. These likewise are the ones sown on stony ground. When they hear the word, immediately receive it with gladness. And they have no root in themselves, so endure only for a time. In other words, when that cycle comes up. After when tribulation or trials or persecution arises, for the word's sake, immediately they what? They stumble. They blow it. They go back to worldly ways. Now these are the ones who are sown on thorns. They are the ones who hear the word and the cares of this world, the deceitfulness of riches and the desire for other things entering in and choke the word and it becomes unfruitful. But these are the ones sown on the ground. Those who hear the word accept it. Ah, they caught it because they believe, they accept it, they receive it, and they execute it. These are the ones sown on good ground. Those who hear the word accept it and bear fruit, some 30-fold, some 60-fold, and some 100-fold. Whoa. I'm going to go to Matthew 7 for a minute. Matthew 
Matthew 7. Parables are parallels to bring spiritual alignment. Verse 21. Somebody there? Amen. Let's speak it. Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, shall enter the kingdom of heaven, but he who does the will of my Father in heaven. Hello. There's going to be a lot of people who are going to say, Lord, Lord. Say, I don't know you. So we must align ourselves so that we do the will of God to enter heaven. Amen? Amen. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in your name, cast out demons in your name, and done many wonders in your name? And then I will declare to them, I never knew you. Depart from me. You practice lawlessness. Listen, when you are aligned, spiritually aligned with the Lord, his word, you do not produce lawlessness. You produce righteousness. Does everybody get it? Verse 24. Therefore, whoever hears these sayings of mine and does them, I will like him to be a what? Wise man who built his house on the rock. And the rain descended, the floods came, and the winds blew and beat on the house. And it did not fall, for it was founded on the rock. Why? Because it was spiritually aligned with the Word. Amen? With the Spirit. There was a relationship. See, when there's no relationship, people just do whatever. Their hearts get hard and they reject conviction. They just do whatever. They just don't know that it only takes one breath. Gone. In judgment. Verse 26. But everyone who what? hears these sayings of mine and does not do them will be like a foolish man who built his house on the sand and the rain descended, the floods came, the winds blew and beat on that house and it fell and great was its fall. Wow. Because they were not spiritually aligned. Does everybody understand? In 1 Corinthians 6. Spiritual alignment. That's what the Holy Spirit always tries to do. Remember, the Holy Spirit is your mentor. The Holy Spirit will try to mentor you, if you're listening, if you're hearing, I mean. Amen? Amen. If you're truly hearing, the Holy Spirit will mentor you to fall in alignment. That's why, remember, we talked about we should be always looking for conviction. Any, my, anything that we're doing, we should always look to see if we're being convicted. Convicted is not condemnation. It's the Holy Spirit saying, yo, what are you doing? And he goes, what? Is that what God would do? Remember, everybody used to wear those braces and said, what would Jesus do? They don't wear them no more. Why? Because they couldn't handle it. <laughs> I think they got convicted too much. They probably just pulled them out. What would you do? First Corinthians six twelve. Let's do it. All things are what lawful for me, but all things are not helpful. All things are lawful for me, but I will not be brought under the power of any. Foods for the stomach and stomach for the foods, but God will, be, will destroy both it and them. Now the body is not for sexual immorality, but for the Lord, and the Lord for the body. And God both raised up the Lord and will also raise us up by his power. Do you not know that your bodies are members of Christ? Shall I then take the members of Christ and make them members of a harlot? Certainly not. Or do you not know that he who is joined, which means aligned, amen, to a harlot is of one body with her? For the two, he says, shall become one flesh. But he who is joined to the Lord is one spirit with him. Flee sexual immorality. Every sin that a man does outside the body, but he who commits 
sexual immorality sins against his own body? Or do you not know that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit who is in you, whom you have from God, and you are not your own? For you were bought at a price. Therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's, joined to the Lord. Romans 12. Romans 12. To be joined is to be spiritually aligned. Don't you want, don't, you, know, you think about when you're in, it, spiritually aligned, you're in position all the time. Amen. See, but you, when you're not in the line, you miss God. You miss all kinds of stuff. And when we get home, there'll be a book of remembrance. Man, I missed that. I missed that. Oh, man, sorry. <laughs> There's going to be a lot of things we missed. But if we repent for all of those things, it's no longer in the book. Amen? Amen? How many vows have you made and didn't fulfill? How many of y'all know that's sin? Mm. I'll never do it again. I promise, Lord. You told somebody you were going to show up at a certain time and you didn't. That's called a lie. That's why he says, repent for your unfulfilled vows. Amen? Because those things will get you right out of alignment. Hallelujah. Romans 12, verse 1, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, wholly acceptable to God, which is your reasonable or your responsibility. Amen? Verse 2, do not be conformed to this world. Why? Because you won't get in alignment. But be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove with us that good and the acceptable and perfect will of God. That's getting in alignment, spiritual alignment. Anybody want to be blessed? Amen. Well, God sends out his blessings. The problem is as many people miss it. He sends out his warnings. How many times have you ever done something and go, man, you know, I know better than that. I shouldn't have done that. Man, you know, I knew it. It was in my gut. I just knew. I sh man, I, I can't believe I did. I knew I shouldn't have done that. That was the Holy Spirit trying to rescue you. <laughs> but because we were not in alignment, we wouldn't receive it. Whole glory. First Corinthians fifteen. First Corinthians fifteen. Spiritual alignment. Verse thirty three. First Corinthians fifteen thirty three. What's Satan's greatest weapon? Deception. What's his power? Fear. Fear. What's it say? Verse 33. Do not be what? Deceived. Evil company corrupts good habits. Now listen. I want you to understand what evil company is. Those that are not in line. Does somebody get it? There is no gray area. There's no fence. Anyone on the fence is lost. Y'all heard that joke, right? On the fence. When the dude that died, he was an atheist. Amen? And the devil comes. He says, yo, man, you got to come with me. He goes, what do you mean? I didn't accept Jesus and I didn't accept you. I'm on the fence. The devil says, I own it. <laughs> Hallelujah. There's a lot of people that do not realize that just because they didn't make a choice, they're still on the fence. Oh, hallelujah. Do not be deceived. Evil company corrupts good habits. Hmm. So you want to hang around with people that are going to influence you? To cause you to get out of line? Right? Awake to righteousness and do not sin. For some do not have this knowledge of God. I speak this to your shame. Bad company corrupts good habits. Associations bring impartations. 
Matthew 25. Matthew 25. Glory. Is everybody okay? Are you getting this? Amen. I pray get empower, imparted it deep. Matthew 25 and verse 1. So why do you think you're here tonight? <laughs> now you're accountable. <laughs> you can't excuse it. You'll stand before my daddy and he'll say, I told you so. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In verse 1. Then the kingdom of heaven shall be likened to ten virgins who took their lamps and went out to meet the bridegroom. Now, virgins in the word is associated with washed by the blood, clean. Amen? When you accepted Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, you were, and you repented of your sins, you were washed by the blood. You became a virgin. I didn't ask you how you felt. Amen? Amen. You're going to either accept it or reject it. I'm not asking what you've done in your past. Could care less. Amen. Could care less how you feel. It must line up with the Word of God. That's all I care about. Amen? Amen. Okay. Now, so ten virgins. Ten of them got saved, washed by the blood. They repented. They became good Christians. Now, five of them were wise and five were idiots. I mean, foolish. <laughs> so we have five that were... In line and five there, we're not on in alignment, right? Amen. All right. Those who were foolish took their lamps and took no oil with them. But the wise took oil in their vessels with them, with their lamps. But while the bridegroom, who was Jesus, was delayed, they all slumbered and slept. But at midnight a cry was heard, and behold, the bridegroom is coming. Jesus is coming. Go out to meet him. Then all the virgins arose, and they trimmed their lamps so that they could see better. And the foolish said to the wise, give us some of your oil, for our lamps are going out. I want you to understand something. But the wise answered and said, no. Because nobody can give you oil. You have to purchase it yourself. That's how you align. That means being filled with the spirit of the living God. But the wise answered and said, no way. Lest there should not be enough for us and you Go rather yourself. You go to those who sell and you go buy it yourself. That means you must worship yourself to get filled with the oil. And while they went to go buy, because they were out of alignment, amen, they got taken out of position. While they went to go buy, the bridegroom came. And those who were ready went in with him to the wedding and the door was shut. Afterward, the other virgins came also saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. But they answered and said, As surely I say to you, I do not know you. Watch, therefore, for no, you know neither the day nor the hour in which the Son of Man is coming. Wow. James chapter 1. That's why it's important. We align. That's why we praise and worship. We love God's presence. It's more than just singing a song. There's a heart to heart. You're expressing your heart to him because you love him. See, there's an area where God no longer becomes God. He becomes dad. But it takes discipline. You have to go through the process of, to where you're finally dying to yourself and you're shaking. Remember the, when the Israelites were, were uh, in Exodus, the Lord took... Israel out of Egypt, all the Israelites. He put them in the wilderness for 40 years in hope that Egypt would come out of them. That's why they all died, because they didn't they grumble and complain. And only two made it to the promised land out of millions. Hmm? James chapter 1, verse 2. Is everybody there? 
My brethren, count it all what? Joy. Count it all what? Joy. Joy. That's a choice, isn't it? When you fall into various trials, I want you to understand, it didn't say if. Amen. You're going to fall into various trials. Amen? Amen? Okay, why? Knowing that the testing of your faith produces patience. Hello. You're testing for promotion. He's going to check you out to see what you're learning. And if you didn't get it, believe me, you'll come back around. Count it all joy, but let patience have its what? Perfect, Perfect work. See, patience means endurance. You're going to learn to endure. Let, pa let patience have its perfect work that you may be what? Perfect and what? Complete and lacking everything. Nothing. Lacking nothing. So that you are spiritually aligned that you know everything. Man, you're one with the Lord. You're a joint heir of Christ. See, it, it comes to a point to where everything you own is his and everything he owns is yours. Oh, because you're one. He's got storehouses of everything. Does everybody get it? Oh, hallelujah. So we're to count it all joy, right? If you, if any of you lacks wisdom, so he's saying, man, you're going to need to line up with the wisdom from above and cut loose from the wisdom from beneath. If any of you lacks wisdom, let him ask of God, who gives all liberally without reproach, and it will be given to him. But let him ask in what? Faith with no doubting. For he who doubts is like a wave of the sea driven and tossed by the wind. For let not that man suppose that he will receive anything from the Lord. He is a double-minded man, unstable in all his ways. Why? Because he's not aligned. Amen? Amen. He's not aligned. Now listen, uh, when you drive a car, right? You may hit a bump in the road, right? And it may throw off the front end alignment. You know what happens when you hit that bump? It gets shaky. Welcome to the life of bumps. Look at the road. It's going to have holes in it. It's going to have bumps. You're going to hit things. You may even get in an accident. You may even lose a tire on the road of life. But you can't allow it to get you out of a line. You just got to bring it into the shop and get in line for an alignment, right? Same thing with Jesus. You just get in front of Jesus. You get out of the, getting the word. You must decree the word of God to fix the front end. So that there's no more shaking. You, you be solid. Amen? Amen? Believe me, I can't tell you how many times I laid my hands on my vehicles while I was stranded and God fixed it. People wouldn't get it. I get, got stories that you wouldn't even get. Hallelujah. Because God is faithful. Amen? Amen? Amen. Philippians 3. So when you become unstable and shaky, you know you need alignment, man. Philippians chapter 3. In verse... Ooh, looks like 12. <laughs> Hallelujah. Let's speak it. Not that I have already attained or am already perfected, but I what? I press on. I shake the dust off. Okay, hit a bump in the road, lost a tire, got rear-ended, whatever. It's out of the line. All right, I'm going to press forward. Amen? I press on that I may lay hold of that for which Christ Jesus has also laid hold of me. Brethren, I do not count myself to have apprehended, but one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forward for those things which are ahead. In other words, forget the accident. Hello. I'm not going back. I'm going to go into the Holy of Holies. I'm going to get the front end fixed. So I can see, so I'm no longer shaky. I'm going to get on solid ground and just go forward. Not looking back. Verse 14. I press forward toward the goal 
for the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. Therefore, let us as many as are mature have this mind. And if in anything you think otherwise, God will reveal even this to you. Nevertheless, to the degree that we have already attained, let us walk by the same rule. Let us be of the same. I can imagine if everybody was in spiritual alignment, we'd all think the way. We, we'd see the way God sees. We think the way God sees. Amen? So he says, Brethren, join in my, follow, my example and note those who walk as you have us for a parent. For many walk of whom I have told you often and now tell you even weeping that they are enemies of the cross of Christ whose end is destruction, whose God is their belly, and whose glory is their shame, who set their mind on earthly things. If they're setting their mind on earthly things, can they be aligned? For our citizenship is in heaven, from which we also eagerly wait for the Savior, the Lord Jesus, who will transform our lowly body, that it may be conformed to his glorious body, according to the working by which he is able even to subdue all things to himself. See, you're going to have a glorified body. Yeah, if you're in a line. You have a glorified body. Just think about it. You can scuba dive with no gear. <laughs> I can play tennis on both sides. <laughs> you're going to think and you're there. Eternity is such an awesome thing. If we would start seeing more, hearing more, and understanding more, and aligning with the eternal arena, what God says, aligning yourself up with this word, you won't be so caught up in this world. You know that you're just passing through. Because let me tell you, when you give up your last breath, this will be like a one-night dream. You remember those dreams that you thought you were there forever? Vic, some people are going to wake up and it's going to be a nightmare. And you don't want that. It would be a one-night dream compared to eternity. Forever. Forever. We are just tested citizens here. Tested for eternity. Hallelujah. So we're going to press forward, shake the dust off, get the front end aligned, put the pedal to the metal and grow for it. Amen. 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 2 Corinthians 6. You know, when you look behind, you get in an accident. Amen. Amen. You can hit the person in front of you. Second Corinthians six and verse eleven. O oh, children of God, we have not spoken openly to you. Our heart is wide open. You are not restricted by us, but you are restricted by your emotions, affections. Now in return for the same I speak as to children, you also be open. Do not be unevenly yoked with unbelievers. Why? Because you're going to get a, out of a line. You're going to start shaking. For what fellowship has righteousness with lawlessness? And what communion is light with darkness? And what accord is Christ with Belial, which is a high-ranking devil? Or what part has a believer with an unbeliever? And what agreement has the temple of God with idols? For you are the temple of the living God, as God has said. I will dwell in them. I'll walk among them. I'll be their God. And they'll be my people if they do something. That word therefore means if you do something. And what is, what is he asking you to do? Come out from among them. And be separate, says the Lord. Don't touch what's unclean. And I will receive you. I will be a father to you. And you will be my sons and daughters, says the Lord Almighty. Why does he want us to come out from among them? So we get in a line. Amen? Because if you're a lover of the world, you cannot be in line. You'll be spiritually out of line. You'll miss what God's trying to do. Listen, I've been healed probably four or five times. God's healing still heals. God still delivers. He still frees. But there's a place of alignment where you're able to receive everything he has for you. Amen? Amen? So we need to come out from misalignment and get into eternal alignment with Christ and his spirit. Amen. And I want to close in 2 Peter chapter 1. Spiritual alignment. Amen. 
2 Pete chapter 1, verse 2. Are you ready? Amen. Grace and peace be multiplied to you in the knowledge of God and of our Lord Jesus our Lord. As his divine what? Power. Divine power. Wow. So are you going to walk in divine power if you're not in alignment? No. As his divine power is given to us all things, everyone say all things, all things. that pertain to life in this realm, and godliness through the knowledge of him who called us by glory and virtue, by which have been given to us exceedingly and great precious promises, that through these you may be partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. So is the divine nature going to be manifested in you if you're not in spiritual alignment? No. No. Verse 5. But also for this reason, giving all diligence, add to your faith virtue, to virtue, knowledge, to knowledge, self-control, to self-control, perseverance, to perseverance, godliness, to godliness, brotherly kindness, and to brotherly kindness, love. For these things are yours, if these things are yours, and abound, you will be neither what? Barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. For he who lacks these things is short-sighted even to blindness and has forgotten that he was cleansed from his old sins. Therefore, brethren, be even more diligent to make your call an election. For if you, what? If you do these things, you will never stumble for so an entrance will be supplied to you abundantly into the everlasting kingdom of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Why? Because they were spiritually aligned. Spiritual alignment allows you to run smooth. Amen? Again, didn't say you won't hit a bump in a road. And you're going to try and avoid those squirrels, you know, cats and all the other animals that try and get in front of you. But you can overcome all of those things when you're spiritually aligned. If you align yourself up with God's promises, you'll not only walk in divine power, you'll walk in divine nature, and you'll have divine favor. Amen? It's all for us. He paid the price for us. Hallelujah. What an honor and a blessing to be an offspring of the eternal king. To know that you don't have to put up too much longer with all the garbage in this realm. Because there's a lot of it. We're going home soon. Amen. Soon. We're just waiting for that treaty to get signed. Then we know. Yeah. Praise God. So Father, we thank you for your word. We are honored and blessed. Let the word that's been imparted on us be protected by the blood of Jesus. Let it grow and bear fruit and let its roots be penetrated into every part of our being so that we have a thirst and hunger and a desire to be spiritually aligned with you so that we may see what you see, hear what you hear, and follow your voice all the way home in Jesus' name. And everybody said amen. amen. Hallelujah. Be blessed and stay dressed with the glory.